Hello again, Dr. Steele here. Today we are going to be talking about posture. Now it seems like the most simplest thing. Many of you might have been told from your when you're a young child, sit up straight, shoulders back, chest up, chin up. Well, I'm going to go through a few things, some mistakes that are common that people make. And I wanna show you some tips, some things that you can do to assess your own posture and make sure that your body's working the best. So first let's talk about why posture is important. Our, when we're talking about posture, we can break it down into two things, macro posture and micro posture. Macro posture is what you can do. Maintaining good posture, keeping your chest up, um, some things that I'm going to be going over today. And micro posture is the position of the bones relative to each other. There are 24 segments in the spine and they can twist, they can tilt, they can shift. And those we can't really take care of on our own. And that's where chiropractic care comes into play. But the reason I want to talk to you about posture is because I want you to get the best out of your chiropractic care and maintain the health of your body for the long run. So if we develop these habits now then we're much better off in the future. Our posture is one thing that kind of dictates how our body heals. It dictates how we feel. And I'm gonna tell you, show you some things here and show you why that is. And you're going to, you're, you're gonna know this. You already know some of these things on a subconscious level, but I, we wanna bring that to the forefront of your brain. And it dictates kind of how the mechanics are. If you imagine your car, if the tires are out of alignment or one tire is out of alignment on the car, then it's going to wear down the tire faster. It's going to put more stress on the drivetrain, maybe more stress on the engine of the car. Okay, now we can replace the tire, but if we don't fix the alignment, the posture of the car, so to speak, then it's just going to kind of continue to have that problem. So let me show you a few things. First of all, notice where your body is in space right now. Are you slouched forward? Is your head down? Maybe you're watching this on your phone and your head is down looking at the phone. Or maybe you're slouched forward in your bed or your couch or wherever it is. Now, it's okay to have bad posture, so to speak, for a couple minutes at a time maybe. But what happens is the more that we do this, the more our body gets fixated and stuck in poor positions. When our body becomes stuck and fixated, that's what leads to degenerative changes over time. That's what leads to things like osteoarthritis and more inflammatory processes in our body. It can elevate our sympathetic nervous system. That's our fight or flight nervous system. That's our stress nervous system, right? When we're stressed out, what's our posture? Right? When we think of a boxer or a fighting posture, when we're stressed out, we fight, flight, or flee, right? Fight, flight, or freeze, I should say. And so we can have this posture where we're just down like this. Now, what are we doing when we're looking at our phones for several hours a day? What are the kids doing these days? Now, it's by no fault of the parents, but I really encourage you, if you are a parent, to um, encourage your children to sit up straight. I'm seeing kids, teenagers, preteens coming in with chronic migraines chronic headaches, chronic neck pain, back pain, um, all kinds of problems that you usually don't see until, you know, many years down the line. And it's because partially a, a big part of that is because of this poor posture they're maintaining. When the head is forward for so many hours a day and the kids are on their phone, if you have kids, you know, they're on the kid on the phone all day sometimes. Okay. So it's putting stress on these muscles of the spine, pulling and there's actually a little muscle at the base of the skull here that attaches to the sac that surrounds our brain it's called the dura mater it's called the rectus capitis posterior minor muscle so there's all these little things we got about 225 muscles in our spine alone and they all serve as little engines contracting and pulling just so we can be upright and our brain is coordinating all of that function hopefully at the best that it can. And that's partially my job is to make sure that it's correcting at the best that it can. So here's an exercise I want you to do before we get started. The first part is I want you to just slouch down as much as you can. Turn your, your thumbs so they're facing your body and your, your thumbs are facing your body. They're not facing forward. So your shoulders are rolled in. Flex your head forward. Kind of roll your shoulders forward. Slouch your low back. And I want you to just see what that feels like in your body without looking at your phone without doing anything just 
have that posture and see what it feels like. And then I want you to try and smile from that position and try to frown from that position. What's easier to do? It's a little bit harder to smile in that position. So that in turn is affecting our psychology and is affecting our physiology. Now I want you to sit up straight, lift your chest up, take a deep breath in, maybe a couple deep breaths, oh, that feels good. And then try to smile from this position. <laughs> and notice how your body feels. And then try to frown from this position and try to feel bad. Just really try to feel bad. It's kind of, it's a little more challenging. Now, of course, in, if we have a lot of stressful things on in our lives, it's, it's going to affect our psychology as well. But this is one thing I, I want to share with you that you can do to develop your habit to have good posture and stay healthy. Okay, so just notice what that feels like. That's the effect of posture on psychology and physiology. So let's talk about how we can maintain good posture. So here's a few things. Let me bring this down a little bit. I'll step back. So first of all, let's talk about when you're standing and walking around. And many of these principles also apply to sitting. And I'll show you that in a second. So the first one is the number one most important thing you can do to maintain your posture is not to squeeze your shoulders back. It's not to lift your chin up. It's to just pretend you have a string or a rope pulling right up on the center of your chest here, the sternum here, just lifting up gently. Not in a forceful way so you get that kink in your low back or any pinching or pain or anything like that. Now, if you have pain with any of this, you might need some chiropractic care. It's hard to say. But if you have pain with any of this, it's a good idea to get checked out. So lift your chest up. Take a deep breath in. And blow all the way out there. Now, I didn't breathe in and then come down like this, which is how most people stand throughout the day. It's kind of like this. But what I want you to try to do is take a deep breath in and just let your body relax into that position. Now with our head, we have a particular set point that our body kind of likes, and I'll let you kind of uh, try this on your own. So now our head could be too far forward, and we could try and be trying too hard and it's too far back. But for the vast majority of people, it's too far forward. And so we want to lift our chest up, nod your head a couple of times, and you'll feel the motion is coming from the base of the neck. And you'll find that there's a, a balance point where your head seems to balance right over your neck. If you don't feel this, we can talk about that in the future. But you should be able to notice that. Another thing that I see when you're, especially when people are walking around, um, is that you want to pay attention. I'm going to move this down a little. Pay attention to where your thumbs are in space. Okay. Are your thumbs pointed forward or are they pointed in? Watch my shoulders when I turn my hands in. My shoulders have to come forward. I have to slouch a little bit. Now, some people can't sit up straight, and that's because their mid-back is so stuck and fixated, and maybe something in their neck is stuck and fixated that they just can't move in that direction. It's kind of like a rusty bolt. And so sometimes they need adjustments to, to help correct those problems, uh, especially if it's affecting the neurological system there. So what I want you to try to do is just notice that. Are your thumbs forward or are they in? Make sure your thumbs are pointing forward for the most part. Um, for what's comfortable for you. If it's, if it's causing some pinching or some straining in your back to do that because maybe your back muscles are weak or maybe because we have some fixations in the spine, of course, we're going to have to modify that. But that's a general rule that everybody should be following. Just trying to have your thumbs pointed forward. Uh, lifting up the chest, not squeezing the shoulder blades back, but just kind of having your chest lifted slightly, having your head balanced over your neck, and having your thumbs pointed forward. This is a wonderful posture for people to maintain. Now, another thing that I see um, sometimes, especially when I'm downtown walking around, I, it's kind of a bad habit of mine or maybe a good habit, but I, I just notice people's bodies and how they walk and how their mechanics are. So what I want you to check, uh, think about with yourself is sometimes when people walk, they walk with, with a sway back, meaning their back is coming backwards, so to speak, and they're creating too much of a curve, too much of an arch in their low back, and they're leading with their hips when they're walking. 
this is going to put a lot of strain on the hips, knees, low back, and eventually other things and cause that pain, that nagging pain and, and contributing to things like sciatica, okay? So uh, what we should be doing, and I should create another full video on this as well, but keeping the chest up, thumbs forward, and when we're walking, we're actually falling forward. Walking is actually a controlled fall. And so we want to be leading with our chest, leading with our chest coming forward, not leading with our hips coming forward. And we're have, maintaining that sway back posture. So three things, or a few things so far, chest up slightly, thumbs pointed forward, walking with our chest leading, not with our hips leading, and balancing our head over our neck. Those are some great things you can do every single day. Now let's talk about when you're sitting. I'll scoot this down here. Good, I think you guys can see me okay. One of the most common things that causes shoulder problems is people are on the computer and their sho one shoulder is rolled forward. You see the difference here? One shoulder is rolled forward. Maybe they're using the mouse or they're using the keyboard. Even if they're maintaining a good posture with their chest up, sometimes that shoulder can have a tendency to roll forward. This creates a poor mechanical situation for the shoulder and can cause grinding in different areas. And um, uh, of course, I have a video about that that you guys can take a look at as well, one of my past videos. But when you're seated, have the chest up, and well, a good way to kind of set your shoulders in place is bring your arms out like this, take a deep breath in, and blow out, keep your chest up, and then just drop your arms down. This should help you maintain a good posture, uh, um, a good posture. <laughs> Uh, this another thing is here just like with the head where I had you kind of nod back and forth until you kind of find that balance point where your head is balanced over your spine kind of like balancing a ball on a stick so to speak we can do the same thing with our low back we can slouch a lot and we can extend our low back a little too much I want you to find a spot right in the middle kind of move your body around where that feels like nice and balanced uh, where the curve is not too much, where it's not too little, but you're sitting on your sit bones and your posture is nice and balanced. Now, ergonomically, there's a lot of other things that we can talk about. Having a, foot, a footstool at your desk, not sitting with the chair too low, so you have this space under your thigh, between your chair and your thigh, you wanna have that closed. And um, making a kind of a 90-90-90, 90 degree rule where everything's about 90 degrees, maybe a little bit less in some situations. But we can talk about that in the future. Also, check out my past videos on ergonomics and shoulder problems and neck problems. So there's a few tips for you. Start developing that habit today. Make it a lifestyle choice, a lifestyle decision, and it is going to affect you in a positive way in the future. And I look forward to talking with you soon. I wish you the best in health, the best in vitality. I hope this helps a lot. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, uh, please feel free to reach out in the comments or email me, whatever's best for you. And I will talk to you in the future. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.